In this video, we're going to review how to find the uh, Cournot-Nash equilibrium in a duopoly. Um, first, we'll look at when firms have the same costs. Then we'll look at an example um, where firms have different costs. So one firm has lower costs than the other firm. Uh, and then we will uh, sort of give the solution when there are more than two firms, so N firms. Uh, and we'll see uh, that it actually is nice because you can see um, both the monopoly case where there's only actually one firm all the way to perfect competition when there are uh, lots and lots of firms. So we want to think about uh, what we're describing here, right? So the first thing is that um, there are two firms. They produce the same good. So it's a homogeneous good. Uh, Cournot's original example had zero costs. Um, we'll have a positive cost, but it will be a constant marginal cost, just equal to C. Um, but that they have, they charge the same price um, because we still have the law of one price, right? They're producing the same good, um, selling it in a common market, and so they can't charge different prices. Um, so that's going to be important to remember, right? Uh, we don't have any differentiation here, um, which we would have in um, a more complicated model. So we have the same inverse demand curve that we had, you know, with perfect competition and with monopoly. So P equals A minus BQ and the total cost function is the same C times Q. The only thing to remember now is that total output capital Q in the market is equal to the output from the two firms. So Q1 plus Q2. Uh, so we have to remember that when we're solving for, for example, the equilibrium price, we have to, we're going to solve for each um, individual firms profit maximizing output, then we have to add them together in order to find the actual price. Um, and we're going to think of this as a game and find the Nash equilibrium, but of course it is interesting to remember that Cournot was writing this uh, a long time before John Nash. So we have two players, right? The firms one and two. The strategic variable is output Q. Um, and the payoffs are profits. So we're going to index our, our firms by I, but we're only going to have two. So we can just think of it as one and two. Um, and so profit is just equal to total revenue minus total costs. We put in P times Q minus C times Q. Now, the big difference here, as opposed to our monopoly uh, problem, is that now Q is going to the price depends not only on how much I produce, QI, but also on how much you produce, QJ. So price is A minus B times capital Q, which is QI plus QJ times QI. So that gives us the revenue minus CQI, that gives us the cost. And so when we distribute the QI through, we just get AQI minus BQI squared. That's the same as monopoly. But then we have this extra term minus BQI QJ minus CQI. And then information is complete. That just means that I know my profit function, you know, I know your profit function, and you know my profit function. And so we know all of the information, and that's why we can solve this problem. Um, so we can go through the, the first order conditions, right? They are going to be very similar. So all we're going to do is differentiate, and that's going to give us our two first order conditions, right? So for firm one, and it's going to be identical for firm two, just with everything switched, um, we're going to take the derivative of their profit function with respect to quantity, right? They're choosing quantity. So that means, of course, as always, marginal revenue minus marginal cost. We're going to set that equal to zero. Um, and so that's A minus 2BQ1, right? That's the same as monopoly. But then we have this extra term minus BQ2 minus C equals zero. Uh, and remember, this two just comes from the quadratic on the profit function. And so firms two is going to be exactly the same, just with the ones and twos switched, right? So it'd be A minus 2BQ2 minus BQ1 minus C equals zero. And we're solving for Q1 and Q2. And so fortunately, we have two equations and two unknowns. Now, the nice thing here is that we have symmetry. And symmetry is often our best friend uh, in terms of solving these things uh, quickly. So because we have symmetry, we know that Q1 is going to equal Q2, right? They're going to produce the same amount. Uh, we can call that Q star, and then we can just plug that into either equation. The, that, those equations just become the same thing. Um, and so we get A minus 2BQ star minus BQ star minus C equals zero. 
or a minus c equals 3b q star, or q star equals a minus c over 3b. Now remember, for the monopoly, it was a minus c over 2b. So each firm is producing less, but in total, we're going to produce more, right? If you think of a minus c over b as 1, uh, in the monopoly, you produce 1 half. Each firm produces 1 third here, but then that's going to be 2 thirds when we add them up together. So we've got our profit maximizing quantity for each firm. We're going to plug that back into our inverse demand curve to solve for P star. We just need to multiply by 2 in order to get capital Q star. So that's A minus B times 2 times A minus C over 3B. Once again, the Bs cancel out um, and the ne negative and negative become a positive. So we get uh, A plus 2C over 3 is our equilibrium uh, price. Uh, we can then solve for profit. So profit is just quantity times price minus cost. Um, that becomes A plus 2C over 3 minus C. Uh, so that's 2 thirds C minus C. So that becomes a minus C over 3. So we get, a, again, it all works out nicely. A minus C times A minus C. So that's A minus C squared on, in the numerator and then 3b times 3, and the denominator becomes 9b. And so remember, that's individual firm profit, not um, total profit. We'd have to multiply by 2 to get total industry profit in this duopoly. So if we think about this uh, model, we can say, all right, well, output and profit go up as uh, marginal costs go down or as demand goes up, right? That's not too surprising. So when costs go down, profit goes up. And when demand goes up, either A uh, goes up or B goes down, profit goes up. Um, also, we have a symmetric equilibrium, right? And so that's often going to happen when we have uh, firms that basically face the exact same problem. We're going to do an example in a minute where they have different costs. We can't rely on symmetry, so we have to actually solve it, but it's not too bad. Um, but when you can use symmetry, it, it does make it a little bit easier. So if we graph it, we can really think about this in terms of two best response functions, right? And so that's the way we think about Nash equilibrium is that it's a mutual best response. And so what we have here is we're graphing how much uh, firm two produces and how much firm one produces. So we have Q2 on the vertical axis and Q1 on the horizontal axis. This is firm one's best response. So this basically says, these are all the quantities that firm one will produce based on how much firm two produces. So if they produce this much, firm one's going to produce this much. If they produce this much, firm one's going to produce this much. And then this curve is the same thing for firm two, right? And you can see that, you know, as firm one produces more, firm two produces less. The Cournot equilibrium is where those two uh, intersect. And so what that means is that neither firm wants to produce more or less once they are at that point. That is the profit maximizing point. That said, remember, when we talked about collusion, if they could collude, right, then they would produce the monopoly output and then just split the profit because that's the maximum profit. You can never do better than the monopoly profit. But this is without collusion, right? This is a mutual best response without any type of collusion. Now, if they have different costs, right, uh, then the problem becomes slightly more complicated, but it's really not too bad, right? So here we have C1 uh, is the marginal cost for firm one, C2 is the marginal cost for firm two, and we're just assuming in this case that C1 is less than C2. So now our first order conditions are for firm one, A minus two BQ1 minus BQ2 minus C1 equals zero. And for firm two, A minus two BQ2 minus BQ1 minus C2 equals zero. So they're not symmetric anymore, but we still have two equations with two unknowns, Q1 and Q2, so we can solve those. Um, basically, you just have to solve you know, the equation in terms of one of them, plug it back into the other, then you get one equation and one unknown and solve for it. These, this is the result. So Q1 star is A minus 2C1 plus C2 over 3B. Uh, Q2 star equals A plus C1 minus 2C2 over 3B. Um, and then our price is A plus C1 plus C2 over 3. Now notice that if we just say, okay, now C1 and C2 are the same, 
and they're just equal to C, we go back to what we just solved for. And that's always nice. Um, gives us a little more confidence in, in our, our models. Um, and then here we have profits. Um, note a few things about our profits. In this case, firm one has a cost advantage and so they're gonna produce more and they're gonna earn higher profits. It does not mean that their price is different, right? Because we still have the law of one price. They still have to have the same price because they're producing the exact same good. But if you think about it in terms of like a farm, if you are the farmer and you're saying, all right, I'm producing corn or wheat or soy, it's the same corn or wheat or soy that my neighbor is producing. But if I can reduce my costs, then I will sell more and I will earn higher profit. And so that's, I think, uh, important to remember that even in this type of competition, there's still an incentive to reduce costs. Now, if we have, instead of two firms, we have N firms, and we're going back now to symmetrical costs, so costs are all the same, uh, we can solve this. It's actually not that hard to solve, but um, I'm certainly not going to require you to solve it uh, in this class. We get, for quantity, each firm produces A minus C over B times N plus 1. Um, note that when N equals 1, we get the monopoly solution. When N equals 2, we get the duopoly solution. Um, so that's nice. And then price is A over N plus 1 plus C times N over N plus 1. So note with price, as N goes up, this first term just gets smaller and smaller. Um, and then this term becomes really close to 1, and so we get a price uh, equal to marginal cost as N gets really large. Um, and similarly, with profit, which is A minus C squared over B times N plus 1 squared, as N gets large, profit goes to zero, right? And similarly, as N gets large, our total quantity uh, becomes A minus C over B, which is the quantity for perfect competition. So that's a nice solution. You can plug it in if you, know, you have N equals three or four or five. And then graphically, it's nice as well because it shows, all right, well, here's our monopoly price and quantity, right? That's where marginal revenue equals marginal cost uh, for a monopoly. And then the duopoly, four firms, 10 firms, and then an infinite amount of firms basically just gets us to our perfect competition uh, outcome. And so that's why I think people like the Cournot model so much is it just, it nests so well in, in our various models. Um, and then Bertrand comes along, of course, and says, ah, this is stupid, firms compete in price. Um, and so we'll talk about that in the next video.